Isn't it, when it's grand, that, look at it, look at that. <laughs> All young and strong and only person older than me is Crimson. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, we're going to do a book on uh, Baraka. And um, <clears throat> the call will go out next week. Um, and I should, we'll see that you get letters here. It'll be on our website, thirdworldpressbooks.com. And we're looking for essays and writings in the areas in which he was most prolific. Obviously, poetry, uh, plays, uh, fiction, literary nonfiction, struggle in politics. The tentative title is uh, Brilliant Flame, Amiri Baraka, Brilliant Flame. Um, we want to try to have it out, Ross, for his birthday. It's in October. It's in October, right? And I just asked Ross for the eulogy that he did at his father's. Uh, it was brilliant. It was brilliant, man. And so um, those of you who are writers and poets, so look out for it. And we're giving you about a 35, 40-day window so we can, you know, really do it right, okay? And uh, Woody is doing something at the Schomburg for Baraka. Is it Saturday night? Saturday. Okay, all right. It's been a wonderful evening and um, a very rich uh, sharing. Um, I want to just share um, a, a, a last thing, and hopefully we'll have a few minutes if anybody wants to say something. What? Your turn. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, stop. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please welcome Rashida Ishmaeli. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Um, the last piece that, the, the, the piece of Martin Carty, I absolutely adore that piece. And Linton, you recorded that. I l and you read it with, mu with, uh, with, uh, with music. Yes, I, I know this, I, it's really beautiful. Um, I, ju I just wanted to share, um, uh, what, I think it was 2011 or 2012, 2011, um, Amiri, Amina, Mel, and Jane, and I were in uh, Granada. Granada is an old Spanish city in Nicaragua for an international poetry festival. And we were having breakfast and we're sitting in this cafe and, uh, and Amiri comes and he joins us and he says, you know, one of his words. I said, well, Amiri, it's first thing in the morning. You can't talk like that. He said, he said oh, shut up, shut up. And then he said, I'm, I said, what's wrong? He said, that, that Lucille, that Lucille, what's wrong with her? And he'd just gotten an email that Lucille Clifton had, had passed, and they were asking him to do a eulogy. And we were <laughs> in, in Nicaragua. Um, earlier that day, um, uh, we had had the experience of the Haitian um, um, uh, earthquake. And there was a Haitian poet there, and he asked all of us if the poets who were there would, would, would write a poem or something so that there could be that issue of solidarity with the Haitian people uh, with, with this, um, with this uh, earthquake. So I, st I started to write a series of poems about, about Haiti. But what I wanted to read is the one that I wrote for Lucille Clifton, because to me, she's a part of the pantheon of, 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 Amina, of Amiri and, 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 and Jane. Uh, it's just been such a tremendous uh, time of loss. Um, but it's also been, like, like Felipe said, a wonderful time to reflect and remember uh, and share. So this is called Dahomey Sister. And the reason it's called Dahomey Sister is because, um, as some of you know, uh, Lucille traced her part of her ancestry to Dahomey. And I was born in Kotunu Dahomey to uh, a um, um, uh, also, my father was from Nigeria. Your snow, it's called Dahomey sister. Your snow-framed face 
chocolate covering cheeks, lighted windows, your soul shines and tones shape the life you lead from ship to shore, from then to now. We said we'd meet when I went back and you would come share a meal in my house, in my land, a land that binds us. And I am left now to wonder if your foremother was the one we lost, we mourned on ancestral day. We set our fruits for her, the one who rode the waves to where no one knows. But you, impetuous sister, would not wait, went on ahead without me. I wonder who directed your path. Perhaps she, whose face and name goes unnamed, came and led you safely home. I can't, I can't emphasize how important it is to be supportive of, 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 of everyone, but certainly in a place like NYU, in a space like this, when you have um, someone at, in, a, in a position where they can do programs that, that, that transform, as, as you say, and, 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 and have great effect on who we are and what we are and what we can become and how we can gather. I think it is extremely important to support them. And so um, I would urge you to, again, um, acquaint yourself with, 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 uh, with Mancha Jawara and Jair Placid and let them know how much you appreciate the work that they have done over the years, because it is no small thing. You have to justify what you do, you have to produce a program, and you have to justify it. And, and sometimes when people have controversy around them, they have to make a strong argument that there is a, a need for that voice, and there is a place where people uh, uh, can, can come and gather and hear that voice. And they've done this consistently over time. And I think we have to appreciate it. It's not enough just to come, but also just go over and say, you know, thank you very much. I appreciate what you do. It, you don't have to do beyond that. You also need to support Black Renaissance. Uh, uh, this. This, this comes out of the, of the, of the Department of uh, um, Institute of African American Affairs. And these are things that are very important. The, the work that they do is really, really remarkable. And it, and it reflects the highest um, um, level of art and scholarship. So I hope that you will be supportive. And I guess finally I would say the love and the respect that we have for Jane Cortez and Amiri Baraka must be reflected in the work that we do, in the ways that we treat each other, in the ways that we love ourselves, and that the ways that we, 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 we respect the work that we say we do. If we are poets, if we are artists, we must be the best that we can. John Oliver Killens always said, the role of an artist is to make revolution irresistible. And that's where we should be going, because in that process, we also become honorable people. And that's what we should describe to be. They were honorable people, and if we say we love them, if we say they are our friends, then we must try to be worthy of being in their presence. And so we say good night, we say we honor them, we, we appreciate them, and go and do a good deed. <laughs>